Okay, today we're going to be uh, making Clark's Giant Steel Fountain. Okay, because this fountain's been around for 50, 60, 70 years, and it's uh, I'm not the first one to make it. I won't be the last one, but I I've, I've made some changes to what I've learned, and that's what we're going to concentrate on today. The first thing we're going to start with is where we want to end up. This is the finished product, and if you notice, it's not steel. A lot of people think it's made out of a steel pipe or something. And the steel is, it burns steel as part of the fuel. And that's what makes the, the sparks. And it's not actually made out of steel. The, the, the tube is still cardboard. But we're going to end up here, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and this is a complete finished fountain. There's been a lot of articles in AFN from other people that have been, ma have been made the fountains. And I started making the fountains about two years ago, and in the beginning, in the beginning I followed exactly, you, know, you follow what you can read, and what you find out, and what, what you come across. And the first thing I found out is that they're very unreliable. A lot of times they don't work as they're intended to work, because they're so big and there's so much pressure. So what I developed is, I developed a method where I get consistency over, if you shoot six, they're all going to start just about the same exact time, go to the same exact height, and die out at the same time. And I've done that. And they're very reliable now. I've never had one failure since I finished this development. But before we did that, we had some failures. Okay? The biggest problem with this fountain is the immense amount of pressure that it builds up. Because okay, it's so large. And there's like 1,100 grams of comp in it. And it's a very fast burning fountain. It's only 45 seconds. So there's two things you have to do in order to be successful. One is keep it contained. Okay? And two is the nozzle can erode. Because if the nozzle erodes, which means it gets larger, it's going to make the, the plume a lot smaller. And it's going to shoot up and then it's going to die out. So initially, I started making nozzles, just like in the, with, out of the clay and, and everything. And they would constantly erode. And they would also blow out. You would blow out the nozzle and it would be failure from the nozzle because you're just dealing with clay up here. You're dealing with three ounces of clay, three inches of clay, but I had major nozzle erosion failures. So I came up with a reusable aluminum nozzle, okay, which solved my nozzle problems. And we're going to talk about this. But what happened was I contained such nice pressure in the, in the top, I had a problem with the bottom. Okay, The pressure in the top contained, but it kept blowing out the bottoms, which was clay only. So then I let it go to the bottom. So now we have a wooden plug in the bottom, and we have a metal nozzle on top. And this contains the pressure, and the nozzles barely erode at all, because it, it erodes about, about an eighth of an inch maximum because the size of the nozzle is a little bit smaller than the size of the clay. And I did that because they're reusable. I didn't want the heat to really melt it. And I've never had really had any melting problems, but I've reused them all the time. So this is one that's successfully been fired. It's a lot lighter than this one because everything's burned out of it. And you can see the nozzle doesn't burn at all. And the clay behind it, if you look at, this is one where you can see I took that reusable nozzle out, and you could see condition of the, no of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the clay nozzle. And it's just about, except for that about eighth of an inch, it looks new. Because it's not really doing anything but channeling the fire out this metal. It's, it's really protecting my aluminum nozzle. That's all the clay is doing anymore. And this, is, this whole top end is holding back the force, and the clay is just protecting it. So I found, and once I've done this, okay, it took me about 20 fountains to get to that point. I haven't had any failures at all. So I can constantly make the fountains and they're not going to fail. In the beginning, you would, the, the tube would end up flying through the air because it would blow out the bottom and it would be going constantly through. And I would follow the directions specifically exactly as published. And the biggest problem is, is failure of the plug and failure of the top and, and getting that to be strong enough. So that's why I developed this uh, method. Now, since I've never had a failure, it doesn't mean I'm not going to. And there's are, there are metal in here 
that in case, I guess, if the tube would fail, you could have something flying through the air. And the same thing with a rack. You know, racks have screws in the plugs in the bottoms. And it's the same type of uh, issues with pieces of racks flying when salutes detonate inside. So I don't think of it as much of a risk having the aluminum part in there because it's so, it's so reliable. Before, I, when I first started this, I would be far, far away and just worried about the tube failing. But now they're so reliable, it, it, I've shot so many of them, I'm not really uh, concerned at all about having a total failure because the tube is so strong, okay? Let's just talk about the tube for one second. It's, a, it's made, Dawn Treader gets these made and in your, in your handouts, I talk about the sources and he's really re got this rekindled again because he can get the, he sells these tubes and they're not, they're, they're $12, okay? Right off the bat, this is not a fountain you want to do for profit. It's, 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 uh, it's, for, it's for love. It's not, you can buy them a lot cheaper, but you're not going to get the height. But uh, at the end of the day, when you're all done, you end up spending about $20 per fountain, not including this reusable nozzle, you know, which I had made up. Okay. The way we're going to go about this is, is that over here is everything we need to make the fountain. Everything's already well prepared. Okay. But we're going to start over here and do the, do the preparation of each item. But we're not going to actually use this, except for the clay we're going to use. But we're not going to use the stuff that we mix here today, because I already have it all made up. But I want to show you, take you through the steps. Everything on this table here is the raw materials to make this finished item. So this is here. And okay, we just got to assemble it now. 